This video is for section 6.2, combining random variables. And this video actually has a couple nuggets of information that we'll be using not just in this chapter, but throughout the course. And I'll be sure to point out those important bits of information for you. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at our first example here. We have a brand of bathtub that comes with a dial set to set the water temperature. And we want it in baby safe mode so that we don't uh, boil the baby as it were. And the temperature X of the water follows a normal distribution. We're given the mean and the standard deviation. Um, so we are told that X follows a normal distribution. We have its mean and we also have its standard deviation. Okay, now here we want to take the temperatures that are now in Celsius and convert them to Fahrenheit. And recall that the Fahrenheit formula is F equals 9 fifths, whatever the temperature is in Celsius, plus 32. So the idea here is we're going to come back to some ideas from chapter 1, where we're taking a distribution that is now in Celsius, we're going to multiply and add to it. And we have to think about what the effects will be on the mean and the standard deviation. So let's go ahead and look at those effects. And we're going to have some rules here that you may want to pause the video for. So we're going to take a look at the effects of a linear transformation. What if we take a variable x, multiply and add to it? Well, there's three things that will occur. First of all, the shape of the distribution will not change. If we had a normal distribution before, we will end up with a normal distribution. The rule for the mean, however, is that the new mean in Fahrenheit, y, we're going to take the old mean, multiply by whatever's being multiplied by, and add by whatever's being added to. Those are the concepts from chapter one, where a distribution gets affected by both the, uh, the multiplier and by any addition here. So that'll be the rule for the mean. And for the standard deviation, keep in mind that standard deviations are affected by multiplications, but not by additions. So notice we'll be multiplying by B, but not, be at, not adding the A here. And we need those absolute value bars just in case B happens to be negative. We still need, need to have the magnitude here. So we want the absolute value bars here. So what are the mean and the standard deviation in Fahrenheit? So let's do the work here. So the work here is, remember we have x that is normally distributed with a mean of 34 and a standard deviation of 2. Okay, And we would like to apply this transformation. y is going to equal 32 plus 9 fifths x. So the new mean, the mean of x, means that we can take our old mean, which is, 30, uh, which is 34, we can multiply it by 9 fifths, and we can add 32 to it. We will do both transformations. Do the work in your calculator. You can see that that should come out as 93.2 degrees, and that's now in Fahrenheit. Our new standard deviation, remember standard deviations are only affected by multiplications. So the new standard deviation will be the old standard deviation of 2 multiplied by 9 fifths. That comes out as 18 fifths. And we have a standard deviation of 3.6 degrees. Fahrenheit. So we have our new mean and our new standard deviation. And now we can do normal distribution problems involving that mean and that standard deviation if we wanted to. Okay? So that's the first part of the video. The next part of this section is what happens if we have two different distributions that we want to combine. And here we have two gentlemen playing golf. We have Tom's scores that follow a normal distribution. We're given the mean and the standard deviation. And we're given George's scores that also have a mean and a standard deviation. So let's summarize. Tom's score. Those are x. They are normally distributed and with a mean of 110 and a standard deviation of 10. And we have George's scores y. They are also normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 8. And what we're interested in here is how likely is it that Tom has a better score than George? Now keep in mind that this is golf. And in golf, we want a lower score. A lower score is a better score. Tom is X and George is Y. So basically, we want to know what is the probability that Tom X has a lower score than George who is Y. Put another way, that means we want to know what's the probability that X minus Y is, um, excuse me, X minus Y. Let me go backwards there. We'll erase our guy here. X minus Y is less than zero. So the idea here is, because of the way we've set this up, I'm interested not in X, not in y, I'm inter interested in this distribution, x minus y. So I need some rules for what happens when I combine variables. And here are those rules. We need a rule for means and a rule for standard deviations. First, here are the rule for means. And again, you may want to pause the video here. The rules for means are, if you're taking two distributions and you're adding them together, well, like you might think, the total means that you can add the means together. The mean of the total score would just be the means of the individual, the total of the individual means, rather. Pretty easy rule. 
What if we're subtracting? The idea here is if we're subtracting, then we can subtract the means. And if you think about these rules, they should kind of make sense to you. Uh, George has a mean of, 100, of 110. Tom has a mean of 100. On average, they are 10 strokes apart from each other. You're allowed to subtract means. That's probably the easier of the two things we're going to look at. But in the next slide here, we need to talk about standard deviations. And actually, there is no rule for standard deviations, because keep in mind that standard deviations come from taking the square root of something. And we're not allowed to add and subtract square roots. What we are allowed to add and subtract is their squares. Those are the variances. So here are the rules. If x and y are independent random variables, then what we have here is the combined variance of x plus y means you take the variance of x and you add it to the variance of y. From there, I could square root it and get the standard deviation. That should make a little bit of sense to you, but what's more surprising here is if I want to find the variance of the difference between distributions, it's the same rule. We still add the variances together. And in this video, I'm not going to explain why that occurs. In class, we'll do a, an explanation or a little lab that will get you to the idea of it. Um, but keep in mind that variances always add. The big idea here is that variances add. Standard deviations don't. If we're combining distributions, we want to add their variances. Okay? So the idea here is if I want to find the variance between x minus y, I will take the two variances from the problem, where keep in mind that Tom's variance or standard deviation was 10. We square that to get his variance, plus George's, which is 8. We'll square that. That will come out as 164. That's the combined variance. Therefore, the standard deviation between Tom and George this is the square root of 164, which hopefully I have handy here. I do. It's 12.8. Okay, and we're going to use that number in some calculations now. But variance is add. If there's anything in this packet that you want to put stars around, it's this idea that variance is add and standard deviations don't. One last bit of information that we do need is what happens with the shape of the distributions, and that's down here. That if we have two normal distributions, we have two normal independent distributions, their sum or difference will also be normally distributed. So we'll be safe using a normal distribution here. So how does this work when we put it all together? Okay, so let's throw it all together here. Here's how this works. How likely is it that Tom has a better score than George? Keep in mind that Tom has a normal distribution, 1, 10, 10. George also has a normal distribution, 100, 8. And I'm interested in a dis distribution of x minus y. So the mean of x minus y means that I can take the two means and simply subtract them from each other. 110 minus 100, that's 10. Which means that on average, Tom beats George, or Tom takes 10 more strokes than George does. George actually beats Tom by 10 strokes on average. The standard deviation of x minus y, well, that was what I did on the last slide. That is that number 12.8. So I have a mean here, and I have a standard deviation here. They are for x minus y, and since the two original distributions were normal, this means that x minus y will have a normal distribution with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 12.8. Okay? Okay, now at this point, I'm going to give you the secret word. If you're one of the first five people to come to me with the secret word, you win the Jolly Rancher candy bonus. The secret word is civilization. Civilization. First five people, you get Jolly Ranchers. Okay, let's continue on. We have x minus y. And keep in mind what I want. I want the probability that x minus y is less than 0. Well, I have everything I need now. I have a normal distribution. I'll sketch it out. The mean is 10. And I want the probability that this comes out as less than 0. 0 would be down here somewhere. I know the mean and the standard deviation, so I'm all set to go. I'm going to grab my calculator, use norm CDF. I'm going to trust that you can do that. We get an answer of 0.2173, which you should verify. Okay, so the idea of this video is what happens when we combine random variables. Just keep in mind that variances add, standard deviations don't, and that's the big message for today.